Welcome back to This Is A Commander channel, where this is a Commander channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander, Tough Rules, and Cool Interactions, episode 106. Today's episode is going to take a look at one of the newest cards from the new Ixalan set that I can pretty much guarantee will see more play in Commander than any other card from that set, and how it does or doesn't interact with triggered abilities of different kinds. The card is Roaming Throne, and it is a colorless artifact creature for just four mana, which means that it can go into any commander deck, no matter the color identity. So let's take a look at what it does. It has Ward 2, and then three other abilities. The first says that as Roaming Throne enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. The next says, Roaming Throne is the chosen type in addition to its other types. And then the last ability says that if a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So it may not look at all that confusing, of course, but that's what this channel is all about. Also, stay tuned all the way to the very end of this video as I do have two bonus questions for you all to try and answer. So let's see how this throne works with one of the more popular commanders this year from the Eldraine set, Hilda of the Icy Crown. She says that whenever you tap an untapped creature an opponent controls, you may pay one generic mana. When you do, choose one. Create a 4-4 white blue elemental creature token, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, or scry two and then draw a card. Now, we know from the Comprehensive Rules, section 603.1, that a triggered ability is always something that begins with when, whenever, or at. But when we read Hilda's ability, we can see that she has both whenever and later then in her ability when. So what's the deal here? The question becomes this. You control Hilda and the throne in which you chose human as it entered the battlefield, and then you cast Twiddle to tap an opponent's creature down. This means that Hilda will trigger, and the throne's static ability will cause it to trigger again. So now you will have two triggered abilities on the stack, each one asking if you would like to pay one generic mana. You then go to resolve the topmost triggered ability on the stack, and you choose to pay the one, and this creates a new triggered ability in which you are to choose one of those three modes. But does the throne's static ability cause an additional triggered ability to happen? In other words, after all is said and done, could you tap down one creature, pay two mana, and then result in putting four plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. We must dive deeper into something called a reflexive trigger, which is what we have here on Hilda, and that section of the comprehensive rules is in 603.12, which says, a resolving spell or ability may allow or instruct a player to take an action and create a triggered ability that triggers when a player does or doesn't take that action or when something happens this way. These reflexive triggered abilities follow the rules for delayed triggered abilities, except that they are checked immediately after being created and triggered based on whether the trigger events or event occurred earlier during the resolution of the spell or ability that created them. Okay. So that means we now need to take a look at the section covering delayed triggered abilities, and we will see a rule under CR 603.7e that says, if an activated or triggered ability creates a delayed triggered ability, the source of that delayed triggered ability is the same as the source of that other ability. The controller of that delayed triggered ability is the player who controlled that other ability as it resolved. So, based on that ruling, it seems like this should work out just fine. But sadly, something being the source doesn't mean that it's the object. Once again, we must dive deeper into the comprehensive rules to find section 603.2e, which says, some effects refer to a triggered ability of an object. Such effects refer only to triggered abilities the object has, not any delayed triggered abilities that may be created by abilities the object has. So this means that the static ability on the throne will see the reflexive triggered ability as something that's triggered 
off of the other triggered ability and not as something triggered off of the Hilda, a human. This is a bummer, and there are many other legendary creatures out there with reflexive and delayed triggered abilities, so if you're going to be running the Roaming Throne in those decks, just be careful of what you do have an additional uh, trigger. And now, on to those two bonus questions, which I haven't done in a long time, so I'm very looking forward to seeing all of your answers, as these are going to be pretty tricky for a lot of players. Bonus question number one. You played your Roaming Throne last turn, and as it entered, you chose the creature type of human. And then this turn, you play your Kindred Discovery, which says, as Kindred Discovery enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. And then it also says that, whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. As it entered, you chose the creature type of human. You attempt to move to your combat step, but I respond by casting Dress Down, which has Flash, and says, Creatures lose all abilities. And we then move to your Declare Attacker's step, in which you declare your throne as an attacker. Will you draw a card from your throne, attacking via the Kindred Discovery's triggered ability? Why or why not? Okay, and now for bonus question number two. You control Hilda, and then you play your Tangle Wire, which is an old artifact that has Fading 4. You can read the reminder text here on Fading if you would like, but it's not all too relevant, just that it does now have the four Fade counters on it. And then the Tangle Wire also has a triggered ability that says, at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player taps an untapped artifact, creature, or land they control for each fade counter on Tanglewire. So after you pass your turn and your next opponent in turn order goes to their upkeep and they tap four of their creatures because of the Tanglewire, how many triggers will there be on your Hilda? Zero, one, two, a three, four, or is it possibly more? What made you say the number that you have picked? Anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you have found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you have even learned something about these crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. And now I'm turning my heater back on because it is like 30 degrees in this room. Oh my goodness, it is cold.